Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. We are happy to be with you. Mid-October is here. Fall weather has truly arrived. Have you guys been drinking a lot of pumpkin spice lattes and oh. pumpkin spiced things? No. Spider, cider, apple cider. Pumpkin spice cider? No. I, I, I've, just, I've missed the boat on the pumpkin spice train and I can't see myself ever Did you know ever there's pumpkin it. spice Febreze? No, I did not. Now know. don't try eating that, please. <laughs> However, my kids do say that that the pumpkin spice Cheerios are really Can you good. use it as mouthwash? Cheerios? Water, as yes. breath freshener. Pumpkin spice really. Cheerios. I think pumpkin spice needs to be stopped. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> it needs to be stopped. Oh, we, Mark, you better, you better watch out. There might be, a, gonna, there if, might be if, a revolt in front of your house if for this. If you're just going that. to use pumpkin as an edible item, I think there's only one way to go with that, and we'll get to that later in today's show as we have, don't have pumpkin spice, but we do have. Pumpkins will give you a reason to let that canned pumpkin in your cupboard finally expire. We might have some expired pumpkin <laughs> for you as well to pass along. You never know. You, <laughs> you never have to know. watch to find out. We won't eat it though, we promise. Also today we'll take you to the second largest homeschool volleyball tournament in the entire country where one local team came out on top. A faith-based story for you, but first, today's scripture. It's Hebrews chapter 12 verses 11 through 13. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees, make level paths for your feet, so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Interestingly enough, I was just talking with a fellow staff member here at the TV station, had shoulder surgery, and she said the amount of pain that she has to go through in rehab, it's amazing that that painful process could bring about healing. But sure enough, that is exactly what happens through that difficult road of healing. Wow, I don't like to think about that. Right. But there's lots of scripture verses that talk about the times when we are supposed to be joyful through trials. Mm. They are painful, they're difficult, but it's part mm. of that molding process that God is shaping us into that person who he desires us to be. Absolutely. Now, one organization who is disciplining themselves both on and off the court is the Ohio Eagles. It's a local homeschool sports association that offers competitive basketball and volleyball. Now, last weekend, the Eagles varsity and junior high volleyball teams competed in the Midwest Volleyball Championship, the second largest homeschool volleyball tournament in the United States. Jennifer was there and has more. Eight courts, 72 games, more than 432 volleyball players, and thousands of bumps, sets, and spikes. That's what could be found at day one of the Midwest Volleyball Championship in Fort Wayne, Indiana, the second largest homeschool volleyball tournament in the country. That's right, every one of these players are educated at home, an educational option continually growing in popularity in the United States. And just as that educational option grows, so do extracurricular opportunities for homeschooled students. So, uh, homeschoolers do play very competitive volleyball. Um, homeschoolers as, as a group, um, we have a lot of, uh, is, there are obviously a lot of Christians on um, the homeschool. I think probably the population is a little bit higher uh, Christian, but they're not all Christians here. These are not all Christian homeschool organizations. Um, so we get a wide variety of, of girls here. That wide variety included teams from Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, Ohio, and even as far as Wisconsin and Missouri. Friday we do pool play all day, and we structure it so that way on Saturday um, the, the more competitive teams play in one bracket and the less competitive teams play in another bracket. So what that gives us on Saturday is we usually have pretty good level of competition throughout. Um, it's just the, the gold bracket would be all of your really, really highly competitive teams. Uh, but even the bronze bracket, which are teams that finished in the lower third of the day, uh, because they're playing against all other teams that finished in the lower third, that tends to be a very competitive bracket as well. By Saturday, the host team, Fort Wayne Falcons, found both their varsity and junior varsity teams seated near the top in their respective gold divisions. Northwest Ohio was well represented too, with the Ohio Eagles, whose home court is in Herod, Ohio. The Eagles Junior High started day two at the top of the gold division with the varsity competing in the silver. It was, this is a learning year, like I had said before. It's a learning year and I'm looking forward to see how we do in this tournament this year because of how far we've come. For the Ohio Eagles Junior High, that how far ended up at the top, winners of the Junior High Gold Division. Both Fort Wayne teams finished second, but featured three players in the first all-tournament team. 
17-year-old Kayla Rimchisel was one of them. I really appreciate like the relationships that I've made through it, and um, I appreciate that like even though it's a homeschool team, they're really like skill-based and they focus a lot on uh, training you in good volleyball and. Um, I appreciate that our coaches focus a lot too on character building and so we have devotions before practice and we uh, pray a lot together as a team and our coaches just really focus on, uh, they want you to be like built up as a person and uh, as your character not just on the volleyball court. Which brings us to the bigger picture of these homeschooled volleyball teams. They combine athletic skill, team building, character traits and family commitment. Simon agreed to head up the Midwest Volleyball Championship because his three daughters play. The Ohio Eagles coaches, both varsity and junior high, are parents with players in the organization. I enjoy having my dad as my coach. Um, it has helped with our bond as well as like me and my sister. So it's been a lot of fun doing that under him. Kylie Reynolds plays with her sister Kenzie, but says every player on the team is like a sister to her, a sentiment shared by many. Um, I just love the friendships that you build and being able to um, spend time with all the people and play volleyball competitively. I really enjoy, like I look forward to coming to each practice because they're, they're always so encouraging and we all connect really well. Sports is like my favorite thing to do. It's the one thing I'm going to miss the most after I graduate. So it's nice to be homeschooled but still get to play. Being homeschooled, it's encouraging because then you know, like being on a competitive team, there's a, a higher chance that you'll be able to play in college. So I like that a lot. The 2017 Midwest Volleyball Championship planning is already underway. For more information, visit Midwest Volleyball Championship on Facebook or email fwfalcons at gmail.com. This month's Billy Graham TV special is all about decisions, decisions we make in our lives as well as the decisions we'll make for our country. This topic connects with the ongoing Decision America tour that on October the 6th landed in downtown Columbus where an estimated 10,000 people converged on our state capitol as Franklin Graham and the Decision America tour bus rolled into town. Now locally, several chartered buses carted Northwest Ohioans to the event who say the event was inspiring, impacting, and needed in this uneasy time during our country's history. Well, we asked local viewers to share with us their pictures and videos. Thanks to Libby Cup and Denise Darbyshire for sharing their experience at the event. And uh, Libby emailed me to say that Franklin Graham said, I have 0% in the Republican Party, I have 0% in the Democratic Party, but I have 100% faith. I'm sorry, 0% faith in each of those parties, but I have 100% faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, if, after leaving Ohio, Franklin Graham and the Decision America tour continued east. Now, about the tour, Graham says, America's at a crossroads. He believes we should take every opportunity to stand up for the things of God and His Word. Now, visit DecisionAmericaTour.com to learn more about the 50-state prayer tour, and please, Remember to keep America in this political season in your daily prayers. That's right. Earlier this month, I was blessed to join dozens of other women at Mount Tabor Church of God for their second women's retreat. During that time, I talked with the ladies about influence the next gen influencing the next generation, and I mentioned the value of FCA. Well, at that moment, one of the ladies raised her hand and asked, what is FCA? You know, Andy, that caused me to stop thinking I understand FCA quite well because I'm around you quite regularly as the district director of FCA, but there are people out there who don't yet get it. So uh, just for those of us at home who might have that question as well, just give us a brief synopsis. What is FCA? Well, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes started 62 years ago as a camp for college athletes and it's expanded across the world. And we have 1,200 staff members on board basically to reach out to coaches and to athletes and those uh, who both influence. We know sports is a huge part of our society, that people give up many things for sports, to either watch a game or to go play a game or to have their kids' games uh, be the focal point of their vacations during the summer or spring break trip. Sports is so pivotal in our country, and so why not use sports, my, like we do here at the TV station with our sports coverage on WOSN and also on Sports Report, to use it as an avenue to share the gospel. And so that's what we do here throughout the area in the high schools uh, with different coaches groups, with different events as well. 
So if individuals are at home thinking, I want my child involved with this, I want my grandchild involved with this, of course they can go to their school and find out if an organization is available, but can they contact you directly to find out more? Definitely. You can always call me here at the station, 339-4444, or email me, alynch at wtlw.com. We also have a website, district8fca, that's district, the number eight, and fca.org that you can get all kinds of information as well. I just want to ask though, you know, you hear all this stuff about separation of church and state. Hmm. So how is it possible that this Christian organization can be meeting on site, in there, praying, all of these things? If students make the choice to lead, which is a student-led initiative, then they're allowed to do that. Students have rights within their schools to be able to proclaim their faith and to meet and, and study the Bible. That, that has to be allowed if a student is the one uh, that is initiating that. A lot of times we do have coaches, we do have uh, advisors, adults that help facilitate those discussions. They have a room available, they bring the donuts in the morning, they sometimes set up speakers as well to help the students, but it's a student-led thing where students are making the faith their own and then they are the ones that are leading. It's wonderful. It's so inspiring to see it happening. And coming up November 15th, there's an opportunity that you can attend. It's Beyond the Game with Detroit Lions Chaplain Dave Wilson and his wife Ann. And this is free and open to the public, right Andy? That's right. 7 o'clock at Lima First Assembly Church. Uh, open to the public. They'll share some great stories about the NFL, uh, about being a chaplain and the wife of a chaplain. And even before that, we have a few spots available left. We do a coach's date night once a year because coaches' lives, especially in season, is surrounded and en engulfed with their sport. And so a lot of times the spouse has a tough time during that season. They're with the kids or they're on their own. And so we want to have a special night for coaches and their spouses. That'll happen before that at 5.15, a nice catered dinner. Uh, from our friends at Stites Grocery, and then Dave and Ann will talk about relationships and marriages mm -hmm. so we can build into the lives of these influencers within our schools. Our communities look to the head coach of a football team, of a basketball team, of a volleyball team, uh, and they have great influence on their community, and we want to build into their lives as well. Excellent. That's coming up Tuesday, November the 15th, and as FCA Pro reaches into the lives of so many area high schoolers, these students are also giving back to their communities, as seen here through Perry graduate Kimberly Dove. God has always been important to me. That is a completely truth-filled statement. I was saved by age three, regularly attended church, grew up in a Christian home with a Sunday school teacher for our mom, baptized at age 11, listened to nothing but Christian music, and memorized Bible verses like no one's business. I knew so much about God, but that was as far as it went. Freshman year, I started a new school, Perry, and I was grateful for the change. Middle school had been rough, but freshman year, I lost who I was. I conformed to what my friends, boyfriend, and peers wanted from me. Then, on Mother's Day 2013, we received the news that my grandmother had been diagnosed with aggressive sarcoban cancer, and she only had four to six weeks to live. I can't tell you how many empty prayers came out of my mouth. I didn't go to church, or if I did, I didn't want to. I just wanted my grandma and lost myself even more in the grieving process. God took her to heaven June 18th. My church family at Lima First Assembly of God gave me refuge in a loving church family where I could encounter God in a real and tangible way. In junior year, I saw opportunities arise to start FCA at Perry. I took a mission trip to Peru and came back newly baptized and this changed things for me at FCA. I was able to freely share encouraging words with my huddle. It was re re refreshing and absolutely no accident that God gave me things to say, specifically to my spirit and every message that I have given at Perry. I'm going to write a state in the fall for nursing. I want to be completely involved in FCA there and, I have, and have other opportunities to fellowship with believers and non-believers. Well, it is the month of October, which means pumpkins are a plenty. Pumpkin spice everything can be found pretty much everywhere you go. But did you know that if you want to make pumpkin pie or pumpkin cheesecake and your recipe says to open up a can of pumpkin, well, there is a better way that you can do it, and we're going to share with you what you need to do. After today, Mark and Andy are going to be so experienced as far as preparing pie pumpkins that I'm sure they're going to go home and want to make pumpkin pies all the so time. So there's a difference no. between a regular pumpkin and a pie pumpkin. Well, I don't know what you would call a regular pumpkin. Like, maybe this is a regular pumpkin to you. You just cut my beautiful blue cheese pumpkin that I was gonna wait and keep for a while. I wanna see what color it is inside. I guess is that I won't inside? be using this one as decoration. Just turn it. Um, 
towards the it wall. It is orange inside. It is orange inside. This is a blue cheese pumpkin, and this is an edible pumpkin. Here's a little tiny pumpkin. Yes, there's all kinds of different pumpkins. The kind that you carve are different than the kind that you use for your pumpkin pies. Those are called pie pumpkins. All right. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so we're going to today show you how simple it is. It does take a little work, but the quality that you get in the end is a higher quality pumpkin product, and um, it's just always good. Plus the satisfaction of doing it yourself instead of exactly. a store-bought pumpkin. There well, you might, go. Might or might not be overdue. <laughs> Let's get started here so we can take a look. The very first thing you have to do before you guys don't even start yet cut is you simply have to cut the pumpkin. However, as I did some internet research on the proper way to prepare a pumpkin, a pie pumpkin for pumpkin pie or other things, is I learned that you can just outright cut it, which is what you're going to do, oh. or you can bake it for 45 minutes, oh. which is supposed to soften it and make it easier to cut, which Mark is going to mm -hmm. test that one out. Oh. So we're going to check and see. So the first thing, guys, you need to do is you're just going to cut this thing in half. Like this way? Cut it in half. I would recommend you actually, actually like, stab this that. This way. So that you can. It's not really the halfway point. And that was quite easy to slice in half. Oh. Well, look at that. Mark is winning so far. It smells good baked. <laughs> Andy is not getting too far. Now, I have always done this the Andy style, and it's worked for me. You just simply have to cut it in half. Baking is much easier. Yeah, this, I'm worried. Now, about obviously, that. that does take more of a prep time. You bake that for about, what, half an hour, right? Yeah, uh, at 400 degrees. And you know, it was really simple. Just through the pumpkin in the oven. You're Didn't rubbing it in. have to do anything basic. Hey, I believe in you, Andy. I, I know you can do this. Just think That's how accomplished stem. you'll it's feel. In the way. So we're we'll there. let Mark start on the next step while Andy, oh, I think Andy's almost there. But I have the stem now, what do I do with it? I'll just break it. Okay, so the very next step that is necessary is to pull out the pumpkin seeds and the strands. Now, I have found that a pasta server like this works out pretty well. So one of you guys can use this if you want to. Um, don't forget that these pumpkin seeds can be saved and used for other things. We did you that two years ago, right? You can roast them, yeah. You can roast them. Um, you can also put your pumpkin seeds in the strands in a bowl and put them in the refrigerator. If you don't have time to roast them now, you just have to use them within a couple of days. So Andy's using the hand method. Is that a bad Mark method? is using the spoon method. No, I seeds? think it's whatever works. Whatever works, you know. God created pumpkins before He created spoons. I'm not sure is how they the would. Have, I'm not sure how they would have <laughs> cut them open, but you know that's the case. <laughs> so how clean does it need to be exactly? Well, I, uh, that, you're doing a very good job. I'm not done. That's good. Then. So, are you finding this to be pretty easy to spoon it out since Absolutely. it's already been yes. somewhat? Um, the fact that it's pre-baked makes this much easier. Much easier, yeah. Now whether and it's nice and toasty in my hands. Ah. It's a hand warmer. <laughs> Take that on a cold Friday That's night to right. the football game. You're going to be needing that. It's been nice in October, <laughs> but um, we live in Ohio. It could be cold in a matter of two hours. So once the guys are all finished cleaning the pumpkins out, then comes the next point, which really will take uh, more time. That's when you actually start baking it so that you can get the pumpkin flesh. Mm. Guys, can you see the flesh? You see where Is the actual yeah, the That's meat right. of the pie. Now, in an actual, like if you're getting a jack-o'-lantern big one and you're wondering if you could do this with one of those big, big pumpkins, yes, you can. The only thing is you're going to have a much thinner layer mm. of flesh, so you're not going to have as much meaty yeah, stuff in there that you have with the pie pumpkins. All right, so whether you have pre-baked your pumpkin, like Mark did, or whether you have not pre-baked your pumpkin, the next step does require baking it for a pretty long period of time. And it's up to you how long you want to bake it. Set your, set your oven to at least 350 degrees, well, 325 to 350. Now you're going to kind of slow cook it for at least two hours. It could even go longer than that. It will just intensify the flavor over time. I'm happy with my pumpkin. You're happy. You're not. <laughs> no, no, I think you've done great. You've done, in fact, both of, it, both of these look great. So the next step would be to put it on a plate, Voila. which I'm going to trade you. Okay. I'm going to hand this to you guys. I did pre-bake a pumpkin last night, so we can move on to the next step. Sorry about that. If you drop an unbaked pumpkin, you're more likely to break a toe than if you drop 
the one that was softly baked. Yeah, it's less messy. <laughs> it's less messy. <laughs> There's pumpkin. That's on, on your foot. On Are you okay? Foot at this very Is that moment. your broken foot? <laughs> So let's pretend we just put those in the oven and they are going to bake now for quite a while. It's going to start smelling wonderful in your kitchen. And here's the deal then. After you are finished with the baking, the next thing you have to do is you have to clean out the flesh. So if you clean out the flesh and go ahead and put it in the bowl. That's freshly baked. That is. Do I use that the is. spoon? Sure. And that's all good in there, all that flesh. That is. That is very similar to what you're gonna have in, in here. Now, a secret I learned many years ago, if you can't get enough flesh out of a pie pumpkin, mm -hmm. you can actually use a butternut squash and you'll have a lot yeah. of the same results and butternut squash has tons more. As you can see here, the guys again are using multiple ways to do this. It, and it just becomes easier correct. to skin it this way. <laughs> They're all correct. Isn't that wonderful? There's, there's no wrong way. Everybody well, there probably gets is a, a wrong ribbon way. for our pumpkin cutting. You are all the winners. Participation medals. <laughs> Makes me want to eat the skin, but I don't think I'd enjoy that. It's like a potato. Yeah. Or a banana skin. I think I'd eat a potato skin before a banana skin. <laughs> we'll save that for another day. What skin <laughs> would you be willing to eat on television? The mystery skin. <laughs> All right, so here we have the final thing you have to do is you need to somehow get this um, so that it's it's just it's easier to work with because we still have some pretty solid pieces here. Now you can just mash it up if you don't have your own uh, food processor, and you can take a spoon or you can do whatever. I have cooked with pumpkin in this in this capacity. But the final step that's recommended by everything online, and everything online is always right, correct? <laughs> <laughs> is to put it in a fruit processor of some sort. I'm using a Ninja. <coughs> Excuse me. Are you ready? Just press the button. Which button? The top one. I don't know, is it working? Yeah. It's working? It's working. Now, to be honest, Andy, I probably could have baked this one a little bit longer. Oh. I only Set baked it. For failure, I only Jennifer. baked it for about an hour and a half. So you might want to do it longer, and then your your pumpkin flesh will be softer. But there you have it. You've got pumpkin ready to be used in a recipe, or ready to be frozen. You can put it in the refrigerator for several days, or you can freeze it for up to several months, and then you can have pumpkin pie all year long. Can you add sugar? And I'm a big proponent of having pumpkin pie all year long. I don't understand why it's only a seasonal thing. Should be, you should have pumpkin pie on a hot June day just as quickly as you have it on a crisp autumn evening. Well, there you've got it. Get every pie pumpkin you can find, bake it in the oven, get it all ready, put it in the freezer, and then this summer we'll bring out the pumpkin pie. Hey guys, we're doing something pretty cool this year. It's with a ministry called Operation Christmas Child. So we're gonna take this shoebox inside and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it. So most of you probably haven't met my team here. Woo! And this Christmas season, we're packing an Operation Christmas Child box. You can follow your box if you pack one and see what country it goes to. And we have a cool opportunity today for Rachel and Elisa to take the box and hand deliver it to a child in Grenada. But first, we need to actually pack this box. So I'm packing a lot of toys that I loved as a kid. My favorite was Legos. So we're putting a lot of cool toys and notebooks in there and dinosaur. You can't just have one dinosaur, you gotta have two dinosaurs so they can play together. So we're really excited to pack this box with a lot of toys because we still play with toys. It keeps our creativity going and inspires us. All right, our box is for a boy ages five to nine. So I'm taking them to the airport, and they're off to Grenada. Here you go, here's the box. Here's our box for Operation Christmas Child. We are about to board our flight, so we'll see you there.
they're all excited. They've got their rings and their coloring books and they're reading their books about Jesus and it's just, it's just an awesome day, an awesome adventure. Can you wave at the camera? much fun following our shoebox to Grenada. And these boxes really do have an impact in these kids' lives. So, now it's your turn. Go pack a box. Well, you may not be able to magically make things go into the box just like you just saw, but you certainly can build your own boxes. Operation Christmas Child's shoebox drop-off days are coming up very soon, November 14th through 20th, and once again, TV44 will serve as a main drop-off area site. Here are the days and times. Now, we do ask that you wait to bring your shoeboxes until these official drop-off dates, as we only have limited storage space here at TV44. If, for whatever reason, you're unable to wait, call us to make arrangements ahead of time and certainly last year more than 18,000 shoeboxes came through this site. Just a, a tremendous way that God has been working through TV44 and Operation Christmas Child that have distributed boxes throughout the world and have literally impacted hundreds of thousands of individuals. I don't think that you have to come in and bring hundreds of shoeboxes. Some churches do that and it's incredible, but I've talked with a lot of parents and I think maybe you've done this with your kids. We do this with ours. You know, our kids pack a box. We want them to have that giving mentality, that giving spirit. What are things that we think kids in another country could benefit from, could use, and use this as a service project for your family as well. And what a connection point it is for our kids to write that note and say, this is going to somebody and I wrote them a note and, and they can start praying for that, that person that they, they might not ever meet this side of heaven. Sometimes we hear those stories where they do connect and what a special story that is where a child comes to faith in Jesus Christ, gets discipled through the, I think this year they have an extra handbook they're putting in each box that is going to help with the discipleship process as well. So taking it even one step further, which is what God calls us to do. That's right. Well, that is all the time we have for this week's Faith and Friends. We've enjoyed being back with you after several weeks off. Hopefully you've enjoyed it as well. Hopefully, huh? Well, anytime you have a knife, <laughs> I just never know what people at home are going to think. Made the knife disappear. <laughs> Next week on Faith and Friends, the amazing story of Salina coach Dan Otten and how cancer has changed him for the better. Those were his words in ways he could have never imagined. But first, one more look at our scripture, Mark. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 11 through 13. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Certainly, we are hoping for a harvest of righteousness as we are in the harvest season this October and November. Thank you for joining us this week on Faith and Friends. We'll see you next time.